Everyone's Pete here. So as you can see, I've had a bit of fun test driving this, uh, the FTX Bugster, um, but I have had a couple of problems. You now, problem I had early on in the test run was uh, this dog bone drive shaft came out a couple of times in quick succession. And so I sort of gave up the test run uh, for that day and brought it home. What I noticed was that this drive cup at the gearbox end here on the right uh, sticks out less than the one on the left and what I figured was that uh, the dog bone had too much play and it was able to uh, come out at the wheel end there so what I did as a fix for that was to get one of these little um, o-rings this is from a Tamiya shock absorber but uh, they have them in various kits and if you got one of these you can stick it into the back of the drive cup there take it all apart obviously and uh, stick it in there and then it just stops the drive shaft from moving about and um, it didn't fall out again after that so that was a good fix um, but what I'm doing uh, as a slightly better fix is to use these CVDs now these are the same as they've got on the front of the car because uh, then obviously that can't come apart because it's like a little universal joint on the ends they're only about £10 a pair, so uh, yeah, I'm going to do that as a as a better fix. Now, the other main issue I had with this uh, out on the test run was that although the spur gear and the pinion gear are covered, uh, they, they're not very well sealed in and dirt and grit can get in and it starts sort of clogging up the uh, gear teeth and you get noises coming out of it. So one solution would be to not drive it on uh, loose surfaces like that, which would be a bit of a shame. Uh, but Rick has come up with a solution that he's done to his carnage, which is basically to get some bathroom sealant and squirt it in all the holes. And that does do the job. It doesn't look very pretty, but uh, it does seem to do the trick. So I'm going to do something similar to that and... Uh, Hopefully that will sort the problem out. The brushless that I used uh, was this one, uh, Absima Thrust. I've used this loads of times before in other kits. I never had any trouble with it. So it's not the cheapest one, but uh, I keep buying these because I've never had any trouble with them. Um, didn't have any trouble with the Bugster on brushless either. I mean, I kept away from gritty areas because I haven't done anything to seal up the gearbox. And it is a load of fun on brushless, but uh, I wouldn't go nuts with this. I mean, it's... It's probably going to break if you take it to a skate park and uh, land it on concrete. Um, you've got to remember it is a fairly cheap RC, but um, on the grass it was it was really good fun. Now I did change out the steering servo for this high torque uh, DS servo. There's metal gears and I used the uh, metal arm that came with that. Uh, I'm not sure if that was strictly necessary but I had these and um, they were pretty cheap on Banggood so I thought I'd give that a go. Now there is still a load of play in the steering and it's sort of down to this uh, servo saver. I think it's it's just got too much play so I might end up doing something with that. I mean I haven't had any trouble with it but um, yeah it might be an upgrade for the future. Okay I was impressed with the suspension on this. I mean I've bought more expensive cars than this that have come with worse shock absorbers than that. Now it does lean uh, quite a bit into the corners which you might expect and Derek at Holly Hill is saying about a sway bar set you can get for these, very cheap. Uh, so I will give that a go. Also he's saying uh, there's a wheelie bar set which uh, would be good because it does wheelie now, it's brushless. So um, yeah, I'm going to look into those upgrades and they are pretty cheap. So um, yeah, well worth a go. Now I've got to uh, stick that on before uh, I went out and um, yeah, it did come off because it say it's just those little screws holding it on and rather predictably it uh, got torn off in a hedge. But uh, I was just going to leave it like that because I think uh, this is just going to get uh, knocked off whatever I do. Okay, on the last video somebody was asking if this brushed version did have a slipper clutch and it has. I've been inside here and I've had a look and it does have one. And it's that nut in there. I don't know if you can see to adjust it. It's very difficult to do with all this on. So you have to kind of do it when it's apart really. I've just done it to a sort of moderate uh, degree. It was set okay from the factory but it's something that's worth checking because uh, I guess if it's uh, done up too tight and with a brushless setup you might end up stripping the spur gear. Now some people on the last video were saying this is crap and don't buy it. Uh, I think it's a bit unfair at the price. Um, I think you have to be a little bit careful with this. Um, you can't expect it to perform as well as ones that are three or four hundred quid. 
Um, I mean, most of the Tamiyas seem to have weak points about them, uh, and you know you can spend twice as much on one of those. And maybe people will say, "Ah, oh, well, Tamiyas are crap as well." But um, I had a Traxxas Slash, and uh, I had to replace loads of stuff on that. I thought that was crap for the money. I had to replace the tires, the shocks, the gears went wrong. Um, I had all sorts of issues with that. I had to get aftermarket parts. I had the same problem with grit going into the gearbox like this one. I had to get an aftermarket uh, gear cover. So you don't necessarily get a flawless car if you spend a load of money. So for what this is, I think if you're a little bit careful with it, uh, it's okay. Okay, so would I recommend it? Well, I'll say for the money, it is really good. Uh, be a good one to get maybe for your kids and leave it with the standard kit electrics. Maybe do that uh, drive shaft fix and seal up the gearbox uh, if you're going to go in gritty places. Um, if you're going to go brushless like I have, then um, go a bit easy on it. Don't expect it to do enormous jumps and land on concrete and survive because it probably won't. But um, if you go a bit easy, I mean, treat it like a Tamiya. Uh, it's not a major basher but it's um it's pretty decent it's got some great features for the money so with that in mind yeah i would recommend it okay it's worth saying that although i think i've given this a pretty decent test uh, i've only had it for the week so i don't know what's going to uh, happen with it long term i'm expecting to have to do repairs like you do on any rc uh seems to be plenty of upgrades available for this and uh, the parts don't seem to be that expensive so um yeah i'll just see how it goes Okay, so that's all for now. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.